We're gonna see what happens when we submerge these roasts in wine, whiskey, and coffee for 24 hours and then dry age them. In our experiments, we've learned that adding things like whiskey on top of our roasts before dry aging can lead to delicious results. The problem is that, if anything, the flavor of that whiskey or wine is barely noticeable in the final product since we're only adding one layer. The goal today is that by fully submerging them for 24 hours, we'll infuse our steaks with more flavor. But honestly, I have no idea if this is gonna work. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, let's talk about these rib roasts. So these are choice grade and they all come from the same loin. As you can see, pretty decent marbling, not anything crazy, but not bad again for choice. This side here comes from the front of the animal, AKA the chuck end. You can see that really nice big cap muscle. Whereas this side here comes from the loin end with a much smaller cap. In my opinion, always look for ribeyes with the biggest cap muscle. It's the most delicious cut on the steak. Now, before we submerge them in our wine, whiskey, and coffee, we're gonna time up. So the thing about some of these liquids is they do have like tenderizing properties. And the last thing we wanna do is have them completely fall apart on us. This should hopefully allow them to hold their shape. And in general, I like tying up rib roasts when I'm cooking them whole. It helps them cook evenly, as well as prevents the cap muscle from releasing, which is common. All right, so we got our organizational bins. Let's get these things covered. I got them each in their bins and it was time to fill them up. And I started with the whiskey. I decided to use stuff that wasn't super expensive, but still decent tasting. And with that, I proceeded to empty bottles directly into the buckets, which I have to say felt very weird. Not something I do every day. All right, well, that was a lot of whiskey, a little bit more than I was expecting. Let's move on to the wine. Next up, some old fashioned bagged wine. And you know I had to slap the bag. So this here is the wine uh, we used to drink in my earlier days. Don't recommend it, but we'll see if it works for this. And once again, proceeded to pour the entirety of several bags of wine directly on the roast. At this point, I was praying that the experiment wouldn't be a complete fail. It was a lot of liquid. Okay, two down, one to go. Let's go grab some coffee. How's it going? Can I please have 10 extra large hot coffees? Yes, please. Okay. We have a lot of coffee to drink in the next day. Oh, you take me. YouTube. Yeah. Do you do uh, sort of, yeah. Not Together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's Max the meat guy. Did you put here? Yeah. Okay, let me pour. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thing. You too. I'll see you back in the kitchen. All right, well, in hindsight, probably should have gotten iced coffees, but we let them cool down. Let's do this. Probably a month's worth of coffee, but I yet again completely submerged the roast. All right, we have all of our roasts completely submerged. All that's left to do is try to find space in my fridge for these things, and I'll see you tomorrow. And just like that, it has been 24 hours. Let's see what we got. I am so excited to see what these things look like. But before moving forward, of course, I had to go for a quick taste. The first thing I noticed is there seems to be a fair amount of sediment that's like floating around. I assume that's from the meat as it started to denature. It was almost as if the steaks themselves were disintegrating. I removed each roast and placed them on a paper towel. And honestly, at this point, I really just wanted to cook them as is and see how they would taste. But we're on a mission and I'll save that idea for another time. And we're left with our whiskey, wine, and coffee soaked roasts. Okay, this is absolutely crazy. We literally have a purple steak. Check out the texture of this stuff too. It's actually surprisingly firm still. I was expecting it to be super, super tender. You know, I've seen people marinate steaks in wine and they completely fall apart, but I'm happy to see that they're still quite firm. And this is gonna come as no surprise to anybody, but this one smells exactly like whiskey, wine, and the coffee. All that was left to do was put on some tags and place them in the dry ager. I gotta say, I'm extremely jealous of you guys. I'm dying to see what happens in this experiment. Unfortunately, I need to wait 30 days from here. You guys have to wait about 10 seconds. 35 days later, and this is what we got. All right, and here they are. These things have been through quite a bit at this point. 24 hours soaked, 35 days dry aged. I'm super excited to see that they're not falling apart whatsoever. They seem like normal dry aged steaks. Let's cut into them. 
Starting with the whiskey soaked. Right off the bat, it still felt firm, which was a really good sign. And slicing into it, I mean, this thing overall looked great. All right, this steak looks absolutely beautiful. I'm super happy to see the oxidation on the side is fairly minimal. It feels just like a typical dry aged steak and you can definitely smell that whiskey. The main goal of this experiment was to see if the flavor would actually come through, and the fact that the whiskey aroma was still there was a great sign. I removed the pellicle like all dry-aged steaks, and this is what we were left with. Okay, and next up we have our wine-soaked ribeye. Needless to say, this is the one I'm most excited about. I mean, this steak is literally purple. And as you can see, it looks like this steak went to the gym over the past 30 days. It's lost quite a bit of weight. And slicing into it, very similar visually as the previous in terms of oxidation, and I could definitely smell the wine. Then proceeded to remove the pellicle, leaving us with a perfect ribeye. Last up, our caffeinated coffee-soaked roast. This ribeye was taken closer to the shoulder, so better marbling and a larger cap. And I just treated it the same way. When it came to seasoning, I kept them extremely simple with just salt and pepper. I really wanted the flavors we developed during the dry age to come through with no distractions. Trust me, I would have loved to smoke these steaks over applewood, but sadly I had to keep them plain for the experiment. I placed them on a rack to dry brine for one hour, and I happened to have some friends over while cooking and forgot to take the cap off the oil. <laughs> <laughs> I think you gotta cut <laughs> Alright, round two. <laughs> Look guys, everybody makes mistakes. Then I proceeded to cook each one the exact same way, keeping the pan on medium high and flipping frequently. One of the beauties of dry aging is that the crust forms way faster than a normal fresh steak since a lot of the moisture has been released. But it also means that they cook way faster and it's super easy to overcook them. In fact, I usually pull them around 105F internal. Once the crust was developed, it was time to slice them up. And we were left with a nice medium rare, maybe closer to medium, but overall they ended up looking great for the comparison. To serve, I of course had to pair them with their respective soaking liquids, though I did go a little out of the box with the wine steak by serving it with a purple cow. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had a purple cow, by the way, they are elite. And all that was left to do was give them a taste. And if you've made it this far in the video, please do me a favor, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Me and Tibby would really appreciate it. All right, guys, the time is finally here. These steaks look delicious. I'm gonna start with this whiskey one over here. Definitely get that whiskey flavor on this. You do get notes of the dry age as well, but there's almost like a fermented tang to it. That is absolutely delicious. Okay, next up we have the wine soaked dry age steak. Now you might be wondering, Max, why am I drinking grape juice with ice cream? This is actually called a purple cow. I grew up drinking this during the summers. If you haven't tried this, definitely give it a shot. For sure getting that wine flavor. Overall, it's fairly subtle, but it is apparent, a lot more apparent than like a typical dry age experiment that I've done. But of course, gotta go for a little sip of my purple cow here. That just takes me back. Okay, and last up we have the coffee soaked dry age steak. It's a mouthful, all these names. Okay, going for a bite. Wow, once again, that is just absolutely delicious. But I recently did a separate dry age experiment where I used like the coffee grounds compared to this one, which was soaked. And this one has way stronger of a coffee flavor. To sum it all up, I would call this a huge success. Each one of these, the flavors definitely came through at the end. Is it practical to be pouring all these liquids over steaks before dry aging? Maybe not. Either way, they were absolutely delicious. Let me know what you wanna see me dry age next, and I'll see you next time.